hello everyone. We're excited that you're joining us today. I'm Stephanie Gregory. And before we dive into our presentation, I'd like to take the raise your hand feature for a little spin. So this is located on the tab to the left side of your control panel. And Vicki and I really want to know um, if you would raise your hand if you had at least one cup of coffee or another source of caffeine this morning. So raise your hand. Look at lots of <laughs> caffeinated people. Excellent. Great. Well, Vicki and I have had our caffeine too. So thanks for that. We are going to be using some polling questions also throughout our presentation. So stay tuned. All right, we're going to get started and Vicki is going to kick us off. All right, so good morning, everyone. So we are here to go through a simple use of variables and, and creating a Healthier You interactive bingo game. So just to give you an overview of what we're going to do this morning, we're going to go through why we decided to create a bingo game. I'm going to demo the finished game as it appeared in our LMS so you see what we were trying to achieve. And then I'm going to go um, through the step-by-step -step through the logic and actually go into the Lectora title and show you how exactly how I created the game logic custom variables, actions, and conditions that made our game work. And then we'll review some uh, results that we achieved, lessons learned, and then we'll have some time for your questions. So first I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie, who is going to uh, give you some background about why we created this crazy thing. <laughs> So before we do that, we thought we would share a little bit about who Cadence Health is. So we are a nonprofit health system with our service area that spans about 30 to 60 miles west of Chicago. And we have close to 7,500 employees with our two flagship hospitals, and we have over 100 different healthcare specialty locations. So that is who we are, and of course we put our website if you'd like to learn more about us. But let's get into the business case. So this is the first point that Vicki shared with you. What is the reason why we went ahead and created our interactive bingo game? So as you can see on the screen, Healthier You is our branded employee wellness program that focuses on three daily lifestyle components that when done consistently contribute to a healthier you. And they include get fit, which is all around physical activity, eat right, focusing on nutrition and weight management, and then lastly, our live well, which is our, our work life and kind of our stress balance feature. So we kick off each new year with a personalized wellness calendar that includes eat right, get fit, and live well stickers that look actually like the icons that you see on the screen here. So that employees can track throughout their year their daily activities on each of the days of the month. So within that, we have a wellness committee. And our wellness committee was gearing up for Get Your Plate in Shape National Nutrition Month. And as a committee, we came up with lots of ideas, and playing a game was top on our list. So that led to conversations about what type of game we wanted to play. And quickly, we decided we wanted to play bingo. And then we began brainstorming ideas. How could we make this happen? We could hand out bingo cards to employees. We could have articles on nutrition tips and facts. We could even invite a dietitian or other guest speakers to speak to staff, and so on. So then we actually thought, well, if we got a bingo or an employee got a bingo, wouldn't it be nice if we could give as a reward a Cadence Health lunch bag? So we had lots of ideas brewing around how we could make this fun and interactive. But then, after the enthusiasm dies down and you start looking at the logistics of having 100 different locations, how do we get the bingo cards to everyone? How would we know if they actually read the articles? How would they let us know they actually achieved the bingo? And so on and so on. So we took a pause here, and I'd like to actually take a pause and have you raise your hand if you struggle too with how to engage your workforce that spans across multiple locations. So if you could raise your hand, that would be awesome. Great. Hands are raising. <laughs> Yeah, it's a challenge, and it's a challenge for us. We do business differently than we did even five years ago. So before, we would have handed out bingo cards in our cafeteria, and that solution just doesn't work in today's workforce. So what did I do? Well, I would do what anyone would do. If you have a partner like Vicki, who is an excellent creative instructional designer, in addition to being a manager of our learning and de development department. So I went to her and I said, Vicki, we have this great idea. 
And here's how the conversation went. We want to create an automated game that has an interactive bingo card. And we'd like to brand it with get your, shape, get, get your plate in shape. And we want employees to be able to access these articles and maybe having them clicking on each square of the card that would open up options of different articles for them to read. And after they read the articles, wouldn't it be great if there would be a dauber? Who knew that it was called a dauber? We quickly found out that you call that mark a dauber um, so that we can show the square has been completed. And then wouldn't it be even cooler if we could use our Eat Right, Get Fit, Live Well stickers so that the dauber would actually reflect an actual sticker on the card. And wouldn't it be great that we could, if we could see how many articles the employee actually read to achieve their bingo. So do you want to see how simple use of variables help to create our bingo game? All right, so before um, I go and show you the game, first thing I want to do is just ask you a couple questions. So the first question, I want to get a sense of who you all are. So I'm putting a polling question, have you ever created a custom variable in Lectora? And if you could just answer yes or no, so I can get a sense of who you are and what you've done. Oh, sorry, I've got to hit the launch button. <laughs> All right. Wow, you guys are quick. That's great. All right. So I'm going to close this and I'll show you. Looks about 50-50. So half of you have and, and half of you haven't. That's so a great mix. Great mix. All right, second polling question. Um, How many of you have ever created a game in Lectora? Oh, this is interesting also. Okay. So I'll share that. So, um, most of you haven't, but some of you have, so this will be great. You can um, get some ideas. Maybe I can get some ideas from you who have already created one. Great. All right. So we've got a good sense of, of who we have here. All right. So now I'm going to, we use a learning management system here at um, Cadence called HealthStream. Some of you may use that. And I'm going to pop in here and show you the completed game as it was launched to our employees. So this is just the instruction slide where we um, we're just checking to see I, if you can see the screen. I just want to confirm if you're seeing the healthier you slide, can you just raise your hand so we can make sure you're all seeing what we think you're seeing? Okay, okay. good. All right. Never mind. We see that. All right. So in the LMS, we have given them the instructions of how to play bingo. So to mark off a square, to select and read at least two articles, presentations or links that were embedded in that square. And once they have completed those activities, when they view their bingo card, they're going to see that square marked off with either the Eat Right, Live Well, or Get Fit sticker. And of course, we use their sticker to correspond to what type of articles they were reading. Um, you earn a bingo when you mark off five squares on their card, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. And we made the big decision not to allow the four corners. So um, that's the instructions that we gave them. And here is our bingo board. Ta-da! So what they just do is you just click on a square. And here it took them to a page that had all of the articles that we wanted them to read. So here, let's say we're interested in healthy eating for vegetarians. They click that, and they get a wonderful article here. So a little bit simpler than making, you know, 5,000 copies in the cafeteria. They can print them if they want, read them online. So we've read a couple articles. They go back to their bingo card and voila! Yay! Eat right. <laughs> no one was more excited when I was making this game and the sticker actually appeared. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next square. So we go get fit for summer. Really, it's not summertime. I read one article. Maybe I'm not that excited about it. I go back to my bingo card. 
snow sticker because I only read one article. And so we wanted people to read at least two. So we'll go back here, read something else. Maybe I'm really into this topic and I read more. So I've read two articles, now I get a sticker. And so on and so forth. We just had all kinds of tip sheets and all sorts of information that the dietitians wanted people to have. Now what I did here. But you're getting the idea, but I want to just go through and show you how this works. And all all the different kind of things they had. So let's say, and I'm like, you know what, I'm kind of tired of this. I click on the I've got bingo card. Game knows you don't have a bingo yet. So we've got to go back to the bingo card. And we do have to do Some more articles. Some more articles. Yeah. Who knew there were so many articles about nutrition? <laughs> I'll tell eating. you a story later about these articles. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So now we've got a bingo, and when I click the I've got bingo button, the game knows, congratulations, you've got a bingo. And we were encouraging people to go back and read more articles and not just, um, just get enough for a bingo, but just want to show you uh, how that works. So let's go back here. All right, so now that you've seen how the finished game works, I'd like to um, just do a little review before I just jump right into the Lectora title, just a little review of, of, how you, of what variables are doing so you understand why I created them. So with Bingo, it um, was a really good game. It was, this is the first game that I ever created in Lectora, and I think it was a really good one because the rules are well known. Um, a lot of games, if you're thinking about creating a game, you might be, have to think about what the rules are. You know, bingo, you know, you don't have to decide. Everyone knows how to play, so you just have to make it work the way the game plays. So the bingo logic is that you're going to mark off squares in some way. Um, I, our wellness team wanted people to read articles. You, you know, it could have been questions. It could have really been anything, but something has to happen to mark off a square. Um, there's the ways that you can win, that you can win going, you know, across, or down or diagonally. And that's um, how that works. So variables, you know, variables are just like a bucket that contain a value and they allow you to control actions in a game or in, you know, in your title if it's not a game. So when you create them yourself, they're called user defined. There are some variables that are sort of built into Lector that are used to communicate with the, with the LMS. But user defined, can, you can name them anything you want, and um, you, we use them to create actions. So I created custom variables to track whether each square should show a sticker or not. And then I created custom variables to, to find out whether people had a bingo or not. Okay? So I want you to think about that for a minute. And I'll give you, I'll let you kind of go back here to help you here. But I have a question for you, and so when we did this presentation live at the Lectora conference, we brought with us some of these same wonderful Cadence Health lunch bags that we gave to our, our staff, and we have a few left. So we decided that we would like to, um, to give some to you all, but we want to ask you a question. The question is, what is the total number of variables that I had to make for my game? So if you could go ahead in the, in the question box and type in your answer, if you think you know it, and we're going to send um, Cadence Health uh, lunch bags. We have five of them. So five, the first five people to get the answer right is, is going to get one. Okay, we got lots of answers coming in. <laughs> More than 12, 5, 37, 45, <laughs> 60, 37. That's good. All, All of them. them. <laughs> like that. I've seen some that are really close. I'm not sure if I've seen the right answer yet. No, I haven't yet. But a, so, lot. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. I know. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, but I, I think when you see it, you know, you know, I think our title is correct. Even though it's a lot, it really, they, it is pretty simple, you know? So, oh, here. Um, 
kind of hard to see all these. There's a lot of you out there. All right, so we're gonna we'll go back through here to find out who has the right answer. But the the, the answer is 36. So I'll show you what that is. So we needed one, we needed a variable for each square, and then we needed a variable for each bingo. So for each square, um, that would have been 24 because I, I shouldn't have, I should have mentioned the free space here really acted like a free space and you didn't have to get anything. So we didn't need to skip that one. So there's 24 for each square and then we have actually 12 possible ways to make bingo. We have each of the vertical rows is five, each of the horizontal rows is five more, sorry, and then the two uh, diagonal rows. All right. So I had to make 36 variables. And then, so when you have variables, so you're, you're counting up, you're reading articles, and you're changing the value of variables, and that's when you can use that value to make actions happen. So, um, As, and you can see, as you can see here, each time the learner clicks on one of the article, an action changes the variable's value. So this is actually from a screenshot from my title for the square. When you click on S1, it adds to the variable one point. Okay? And then what I used here, and I'm going to show you why I used it, it's called the change, context, change contents action. And so what I said is that we wanted to, when the learner goes back to the bingo game, we want the square content may change based on the variable's value. So we said that they had to read two articles. So we wanted to, on show of the board, change the object to the sticker. And we wanted to do that if the variable S1 was greater than or equal to 2. So that's how the conditions work on the action. All right, so now I'm going to go back, go into my lectora title and show you what this looks like behind the scenes. Okay, so here's my bingo board as I built it in lectora. And you can see over on the left hand pane, I have just a few pages of content in, in the main title, and then I have these chapters where I hold all of the articles. So on the bingo links page, this is where the, all the action happens. You'll see that I have um, the stickers here, and um, they're just shown to be initially hidden, so you don't see them you know, until they're appearing on the square that they need to. And I'm going to show you, so on S1, all this is is a transparent text box over the image of the bingo board. So each of these squares has a transparent text box over it. And the first thing it does is when you click on it, so here's the two different actions on here. I'm going to show you this one first. When you click on that transparent text box, it takes you to S1. And S1, and I'll show you down here, these are all of the pages of articles. So I, you, I, we showed you that in the, in the title. But here is the S1 page. So you click on that square, and it takes you to the S1 page that has all the articles. So what I did here is that, I'll expand S1 so you can see that a little better. I just made a button for each of the articles. I just liked the way they look. You could do it differently, but I just thought it looked cleaner. Um, and then for, so each of these, buttons has three actions on it. So what does it do? When you click on this button, it opens the article. So some of them are web pages, some of them are PDF files, they're Word documents. Um, that's the first thing it does, it just opens it up. And then it's going to modify the variables. And this is how it's tracking that you've actually read an article. So the first thing it does is it adds to the S1 variable so we know whether or not we should be displaying a sticker in that square or not. And then the second thing it does is it's going to add to the score. Because remember we said um, that the wellness team wanted to know how many articles people read. 
So we didn't talk about this AICC score variable. Those of you who've created some titles know that that's the variable that's built into Lectora. It's a reserved variable that you can use to track the score that's sent to your LMS. So we could see later when we looked at the report how many articles people actually read. And we were, um, not to give everything away, but we were really excited. We thought people might just read the minimum to get a bingo. But there were people who like read every single one. So we, we knew there was some interest in wellness besides just getting a, a free lunch bag out of it. So that's what happens with each of those. Now, we're going to come back here, but I want to just see how make sure this is kind of making sense for you all. If I go back to my bingo board in the bingo links page, oh, ah, sorry. What I want to show you is on on the go back to the bingo card. Ah, I knew I was going to get mixed up. All right, go back to the bingo. So here I am in this page. When I click back to the bingo card, this button has actions on it. And I'm going to show you what they are later. But there's four actions there. And this is how we're tracking whether they've gotten a bingo or not. But I want to just show you that they're there. And then we're going to go back to them. Now back to up here. I'm back on bingo links on S1. So I showed you the two, one action here. The first action was it took you to the page of articles. The second action is the one that I showed you that changes this to being the sticker. So this is on show, change this object to the eat right sticker if S1 is greater than or equal to 2. Okay? So I want to pause here for a second before I go to the next page. And does anyone have any questions about how I use variables to add stickers to the board? I'm going to try to monitor this question box. Okay, just go ahead. No. Okay, so somebody has a question. If they click an article twice, does it add two to S1? And since this is my first game I built, the answer is yes. <laughs> I have learned since how I could do that differently, but in this game I didn't, and I decided I didn't care. <laughs> but you're right. Um, you could read the same article, and but you'd still have, yeah. What happens if you click the same article twice? Yes. So exactly what I just said. In this game is my first game. And I think if, if you start making games, you start being a little bit, uh, you know, gentle with yourself. Can you see an example of how you actually created the action? So how would I prevent that? Let's, uh, we'll save that to the end and see if we have time for that. But, so, but the, by the questions you're asking, I, I see that you're, you're, you're getting how that, how that works. All right. So now what? So now I have a bingo board showing a bunch of marked spaces. But how do we know if someone has bingo or not? So um, we sh when I showed you in the game in, our, in health stream, it, it, you know, the game does know whether you have bingo, bingo or not. So I did create a variable for each possible way to get a bingo. Um, so. I, um, you can name your custom variables anything you want, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them to you. So here in Lectora, you have this variable editor, you know, variable manager that shows you all your variables. So here on the left-hand screen, you can see all the variables that I created. Um, you'll also see my, um, I'm not sure, lack of creativity or just organization. But so each square, um, like the S1 is the S1 variable, S2 S is S2. Square, just, just the way the grid works, the, you know, bingo one, bingo two, you know, bingo A, bingo S. I just named them exactly what they are so I could keep track of them. So those are all the variables I created. The other thing I want to show you and the resources are all the articles. So Stephanie was sending me gazillions of articles, and she just kept saying, oh, she's like, this is a great one, use that, you know, and then we have all these articles, <laughs> and they were named all sorts of crazy things, and at one point, um, we had a pretty condensed timeline on making these. At one point, I just, I deleted all of them and said, okay, start over. I need you to name your articles by where you want them on the board. So she did, she, great, followed instructions here. So now we have, 
the article that goes in the A1 square, the articles that go in the A2 square, so I could keep them all straight because there are 92 articles that are part of our board. So I'm just imagining Stephanie in the cafeteria with 92 stacks of paper trying to distribute these 100 locations. So, right. <laughs> so she was willing to name them the way that made sense for me. All right. So earlier I said I would go back and show you the actions on the back to bingo board. So here we are back at S1, and we go back to the bingo card. And here it does a couple things. So when you click this button, in addition to um, going back to the board, which is that one action here is go back to the board, it's modifying the bingo variables. So here we have that it's, it's going to modify, so he, we're, this is S1, so this is the upper left-hand square. Um, bingo diagonal 1 adds to variable a 1, and again, if S1 is greater than or equal to 2. So they had to read two articles, it would modify that bingo variable in addition to um, when you click on the article. We also had to do bingo F, because it's in the bingo S line vertically, and then we had to do bingo 1, because it's in the bingo 1 line horizontally. So when they go back here, that's what triggers the modification of the variable for the bingo. All right. And then the, the grand finale on these variables is on here when you say, I've got bingo or not. So on the I've got bingo button, that's where the final set of our actions lie, and it has two actions associated with it. So it's either going to take you, so if you just click I've got bingo, um, what it's going to do, it's either going to, it's going to take you to the congratulations page if, and I'll show you this if conditions. It's kind of obnoxious, but it works. Um, and it's if any of these conditions are true. So we had to account for all the different variables. So there's bingo, all the different bingos and whether they had them or not. So there's, and then the values, some of them are five and some of them are four. So my second question for you, if you can answer, we have a, I think we still have some lunch bags left. Um, can anyone tell me why some of them are five and some of them are four? So if you could type your answer in the question box. Oh my goodness. The free space. Yeah. All right. Everybody's getting it. All right. So awesome. Excellent. All right. So the first we'll have to look back and see who got it first. So um <laughs> Lauren from Trivantis who's moderating, she's gonna um we're gonna work with her to, to get contact information for those of you who've won. So all right. And then if those conditions are not met, then they go to the no bingo page. So that's the else action. So if they have it, they go to I've got bingo. If they haven't, they go to the else action. So um, before I turn it back to Stephanie to tell you how you do, I, I do want to explain a couple things of lessons learned that I had. The big lesson learned for me creating this was these transparent text boxes. And I will tell you, a, this is something I wish I learned before I started this, but you know we all learn sometimes. The change contents action is a really great um, action because it it makes it simpler rather than just like having it a show hide or something where you have to you know layer these or bury these. It can just pull from anywhere. But what I learned about that is the change contents. It's it it uses the exact same size as the initial shape. So when I first made this game, I didn't do it that way. I actually I made all these different squares separately, and then when I when I started having the the uh, stickers come in, some of them were distorted because you can see some of these things are you know are more wide, and I was like, why is it doing that? I just couldn't figure it out. But I had some good advice, and so this was the um, just the great thing is you can put a transparent text box and use that to con to just make things cleaner and neater, and only have to have in there um, one time. So that's my big lesson learned of how to make this easier. And um, there's so many things here. Now I'm going to turn this back to Stephanie, and she is going to 
tell you how this all worked out for us. I know. We are so excited to kick this off and launch it. And as Vicki kind of alluded, we started thinking about ideas for um, National Nutrition Month, which was March in February. So she was able to look at all of our requirements, build it in Lectora, have it assigned to all employees with our LMS, and we were anxious to see how the response was going to go because it was really the first game that we had kicked off within our organization. We had recently integrated, and we were excited to be able to share this. And of course, we had to dangle our Cadence Health lunch back, lunch boxes, and incentive for people to go out there and play. So um, Vicki assigned it on a Thursday night, I remember this, and we had communication set to go to the organization the following Monday. And we were at a meeting the next day, and Vicki said to me, um, do you want to know how many people took the bingo last <laughs> night? And I said, how many? I said 10, because mm -hmm. we did a lot of testing. As you know, when you create games, you spend a lot of time testing the features, and we had I asked a lot of our coworkers to help with the testing, so I thought at least 10. And she said, we had 192 people. So she assigned it Thursday night. Our meeting was 9 o'clock the next morning, which meant that our third shift staff were out there playing bingo, which was exciting. They had completed at least one. It wasn't that they clicked on one square and read two articles. They had actually achieved a bingo. So then it became an obsession. Four days after, we had 674 employees that completed at least one bingo. And then you can see the rest of the numbers. It just took off. And we had never had any kind of education that we had assigned to employees or otherwise that had this kind of enthusiasm around it. And as we looked at the report, we could see that it was departments that were completing the bingo. So we attributed, attributed that to word of mouth and coworkers saying, have you done this? You've got to go try it. And it was really exciting for us. This, this assignment was out there for only 30 days. And so how many lunch bags did we give away at the end of 30 days? We had a total of over 3,000 lunch bags, which was amazing because we had a chance to increase our Healthier You branding through the use of simple variables and our great stickers. We definitely had engaged employees. We had a lot of feedback from staff letting us know they enjoyed the articles. It was a fun way for them to get out there, try something different, and learn something as well. We had fun. And one of the other benefits of doing this through our LMS, as far as the lunch bag distribution, we were able to run reports by department, and we were able to um, work with our fulfillment company to have them package and include who won the, the lunch bags in that packaging and deliver straight to the, the different offsite locations. So it went really, really well. It was um, very fun, and we've created a couple of games since then, but we've had a lot of good, a lot of fun with our bingo game. All right, so uh, we've included our contact information here if you want to reach out to us, but we do have some time for questions. And I see a couple that came in um, at the, um, uh, so one question wanted me to show, asked whether I'd used transparent buttons or transparent text boxes, and I used transparent text boxes. Um, I have another question, someone wanted me to show the, the change contents um, action again, so I'll just, I'll bring that up here. So here on, on the S1, uh, transparent text box, and it's duplicated on all of these others, is on show, change this object to the Eat Right JPEG. And you can see the same, um, change contents is on all of uh, the text boxes. So I hope that helps to see that again. Um, the nice thing about that is that you can you you have these you know reference to just this object rather than saying the exact thing. That's come in handy in other things I've done where you can just swap things out and not have to reference exactly what image it is that you're changing. And um, it, it just works really well. So that's my the, the the best thing I learned from making this. All right. So let me try to see these questions. Um, can you show the change action again? Once created in Lectora, does it need to go into the LMS, or can we send the game directly from Lectora to our employees? So, you, I mean, you have to publish it somehow. I mean, 
we have an LMS. You can, I mean, there's, you can, I know you can publish from Lectora to a CD. You can do lots of different things. I, um, as far as tracking, as if you want to track scores and things, I think you need to have the LMS so you know who's doing it. Um, so, and great question here. How do we know people actually read the articles or just click on the PDF? Of course, we, of course, we don't know, right? Um, just like any content that we have, you, you, you know, we have a video. You have to be on the page long enough to watch it, but we can't prevent you from, you know, going off and, you know, doing the dishes or whatever. I mean, it's. So we, we haven't done an outcome to see people actually got healthier, but we know that they read a lot of articles and <laughs> we didn't have to bring them to the cafeteria. Um, how can we check if they reach the end of the articles? I, um, I'm not able to do that in this game. All we know is we, we've delivered them to them. And we're, we're really just trying to mimic that idea that they went to the cafeteria and picked it up. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. We're not adding any additional functionality than we would have had from the cafeteria. Right, and, and that's a great question. So our goal setting this up was really about awareness, um, bringing some fun to wellness, and giving them some tools to have access to, and then actually to go back into our LMS and, and re refer back to them if they would like to. So it wasn't really about having outcome measures around wellness. We do have other initiatives that focus on that, so this was just really about a little bit of fun. We have another question about other games we've created. Um, I have used a couple of the built-in games, though, like the you know, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire kind of games that are built in. The other game that um, we, um, Stephanie and I were so excited when we went to the Lectora conference and presented this, we were like on the plane on the way home, we were designing our next game. And what we created there was a, a memory game. And what our goal for that game is um, Stephanie uh, runs a program for student interns. And we wanted to help them somehow recognize the people that would be precepting them. So we created a memory game for them, which would, so just had a lot of their pictures where they're matching, matching the pictures and getting familiar with the people they were going to meet. And um, with the great thing about that is that I was able to repurpose that really quickly and simply into a game for new leaders to recognize our executive team by just swapping out photos. And, and re really, it took me less than an hour to take that game. It took me maybe, you know, a lot of time to build to change it for a new reason. So. And it was really fun. It has different levels and badges, and um, it was, it's, it's really a great interactive game. Okay, so knowing what you do, what knowing what you now know, how would you build it differently next time? So I would, um, you know, I don't know. I, I know I, I could make more controls about worrying about whether people read the same article twice. I don't know um, if I get too crazy about that, um, but I, I just because I can, I think I would do that. I would probably make these graphics a little fancier. I know we had some nice graphics for the stickers, but uh, I think it could have worked a little harder on the board. <laughs> but um, given the time frame that I had. And we were thrilled. We thought it looked great. The other thing I think we forgot to mention is we had actually had a we had a grand prize with this incentive where the, um, someone was going to win having the the, the uh, chef at our cafeteria cook, cook a dinner for their family. So we wanted to do we wanted to figure out you know who should win that. So that's when we were looking at how many articles people actually read. So we just actually pulled a pool of those who read at least half of them, but. Um, we had a lot of people who read a lot more articles, so I can only imagine they must have been reading them, unless they just liked to see the sticker appear. I don't know why you'd take the time to go through and, and click on every single link if you weren't reading them, but hard to know. Can you show some of the actual variables you wrote? Um, so I think I, let's see, is there a timing in terms of reading the articles to ensure that it was read? Yeah, no, no timing. Just you click on it, you get the points. Same size as the replacement size. You said something about the text box size, the same as the replacement size. So that was with the um, the the, the uh, transparent text box. When you do the change contents, the sticker comes in the same size as the original image that was there. So that's what you want. That's why that text box works so well because that way then all the, the uh, stickers come in and they just look nice and square like they are and they don't get distorted. The bingo board is an image, yes. That's just, I, I made that in Word. That's what someone said, what I, would I do differently? I just made that in Word and just, you know, did, you snag it and popped it in there, so. I'm not sure how you would track a score without an LMS. Maybe someone at Trivantis can help um, with that. Um, someone asked if, if 
Do you use HealthStream? If so, and I, we do, when the articles open in HealthStream, does it close the Lectora course? And, and no, we open those in a new window so it doesn't take over the course. But that's a good question. You want them to be in a different window so you're, you're not taking over your course. And so that's how to prevent it from doing that is, is new windows. So let me, let me show you that if that's something that's new for you. Um, so here on, uh, back to here, when you open um, the article, open in a new window as opposed to the existing window, and that way it doesn't take over your course. Lots of questions here. Oh, the, the tally of how many articles that are read. Yeah, so that was just a report I read out of the LMS. It, I mean, it's really not that exciting to show. It just, I mean, it's it, it just the score. So um, they got a point for every article they clicked on, and that was a you know percentage of the 92, and it just gave them a percentage score. So it's all as a list of names and the score next to them. Um, I don't know. So could you put a timer to make sure they view it for a certain time? Um, I suppose maybe you could. I don't. Do you really want to? You know, we've tried timers with things, and it's funny because we'll do that a lot with videos, and people will be like, "I can't move on to the slide," and then you know they try to pull the slide. Everyone tries to game it, tries, tries to get out of it, and sometimes you've got to decide: is it really worth it? How long did it take to create? Love this question. I really did not track my time, and. Um, the thing about it is, is that, you know, as all of us, as all of you do, I have a lot of other responsibilities, but I really love doing this, so I really didn't even have any time to do this when we did it, but I, I did work a lot of late nights, and I, you know, brought my laptop home over the weekend and things like that, because it was fun for me, and you get, once you start doing this, you kind of get excited and think, I can make it work, you know? So, I mean, I would guess maybe 40 hours, but I, I don't really know, and I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> It was a very busy week. I know there was a lot of work in one week. And it's exciting. It's exciting to try it and test it and see it come to life. It's, it's a lot of fun. So did we, question here, did we consider adding a quiz to confirm that folks read the articles? And we did think about it and we decided we didn't, we didn't want to. We really just want, it was like I said, we're just duplicating the cafeteria environment of passing out the articles. Yeah. We do ask a lot of quizzes for other education that we provide, and we wanted this to be a little bit different. And I think by our results, we really showed it felt different for them, too. So someone asked the question, again, here with transparent text box versus transparent buttons. And um, I can't remember offhand why I chose one over the other, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll think about that and uh, see if we can't get some lectora people to maybe tell us what the different benefits are. Um, Buttons sometimes, you know, the buttons are, because the buttons usually flash. I'm wondering if that's why I didn't do it. I'll have to think about that. Thank you for the nice comments. So there's a question here about how we stored articles in the title as opposed to the articles that are linked. When I created this, I was actually in the prior version of Lectora, so it's done a little bit differently. But with the new um, Lectora version 11, you know, you're just going to add an attachment, and it's just part of the title resources. So um, so what's, um, I think I've got to, let's see. Something about the World Series. <laughs> yes, how long would it take if you were watching the Red Sox win the World <laughs> Series? That's a very great question. Go Cubs! <laughs> how long have I been working in Lectora prior to developing this course? That's a, that's a good question. So I've been, um, I've de now I've been developing in Lectora about three years. Um, and I did this course, it was probably about 18 months that I had used Lectora. Like I said, it was my first, it was my first game. Um, someone's asked a question about how to gain expertise. My, my is just do it, right? Um, I get challenged when, um, you know, when someone wants me to try something new or, or has an idea, it's like, okay, I can figure this out. So um, you just got to get in there and play and, and you'll learn as you go. This is not the, um, 
first, you know, this final version is not the way it looked first. There was, there, was a, there was an iteration where I couldn't figure out how to put all the bingo links on one page, but then it like hit me in the middle of the night and I went back and fixed it all. So just get in there and play. And um, someone said that I built it in Lectora X. I, um, I think it was, it was Lectora Expire before the version 11 is when I initially built it. Um, These are great questions. I think we're going to create some gamers. What do you think, Vicki? I think so. <laughs> All right, so we'll ask a final raise hand polling question. How many of you are going to try to make a game now that you've seen this? Raise your hand. Great. All right, we've got some takers. And now you know somebody who's done it. Isn't that great to have a wonderful resource in Vicki? <laughs> great. Look at that. That's terrific. So absolutely encourage any of you who want more information to reach out to me on LinkedIn or using the or the um or Stephanie also. We um happy to um you know talk to you about what you're doing and get some ideas and share ideas of what's um what you can do, and we look forward to perhaps seeing you all at the conference in uh, Los Angeles in March of next year.